Now when you're drawing fabric around something, that kind of changes everything. The primary thing is that the object takes precedence over the fabric because that's really what you're trying to get across is that, you know, this object has fabric around it. So what I would suggest that you do if you um, want to draw any kind of object with fabric is draw the object first, begin there, um, and then do sort of an overlay thing and put the fabric on top of it because that's really what matters. So you're going to kind of round out and add to the object rather than the other way around. And this is going to allow you to create a bunch of overlap and to create a bunch of dimension, right? Without losing the sense of this fabric. So the next thing to do is decide, um, Squint at the object and decide which area has the darkest and lightest values. What I notice is that the top, that has the lightest value, right? The right side, overall, has the darkest value. Now every single value on that side is not necessarily the same. And then the front side, the side that's most facing, that is somewhere in between those two values overall. That doesn't mean that, um, you know, everything in there is the same value, but what I wanna do is just preserve the overall values of, of these three. So what I'm going to do for the first bit is leave the top blank. I'm going to put a um, a quarter tone um, over this whole area, and then I'll put a half tone over this whole area. All right. So I'm going to just go ahead and, without differentiating much, I can still see all these lines, so it doesn't really matter that much. And basically, I'm going to stop down here because these areas, um, they change direction, so they're part of the floor. So everything that I would consider to be part of this front plane, I'm just going to push into this quarter tone. I'm just going to use the broad side line direction here doesn't really matter as much. I don't think. You can always come back and change the way the texture works. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push most of this side into this um, darker tone. And um, there's some areas here that I'm going to kind of not touch as heavily. I'm going to leave a little empty bit there and an empty bit there so that I can approach those a little differently. And come through and put in that darker tone.
and everything down here, this is all part of the ground plane. So because the ground plane is parallel to this, I'm just going to leave that as it is. So you can kind of see now that I've created a value range that sort of um, mirrors this square area. Um, and the main thing that's going to convey that is that I've still got this square area around here. Now I can go back and kind of vary up this contour just a little bit if I want. Just to make the edges a little bit more round. Start to convey that this isn't really, because there's fabric over it, it's not this perfect thing. Especially over here, around a lot. Now what I can do is begin differentiating within each of these areas and start to kind of make things happen. So this little fold, it has a lot of this tone in here. So I'm going to bring this tone into this fold. I'm going to just differentiate that entire area. Then I can sub-differentiate and kind of get some deeper shadows in here. And if I want to, I can come back and kind of clean the area up where that overlaps most. and begin to work into some other areas as well. There's a deep bit of tone down here that's really dark, so I want to be sure to catch that. Again, remember, it's, it's really easy. You're just working with four tones to start out, to set up. You know, the rendering stages that come later, you're going you're gonna to increase um, and put as many tones as you can in between all of these. But in the beginning, remember, you're just working with white, black, light gray, dark gray. Okay, and if you need to put these squares out to remind you of what you're working with and just sort of go point A to point B and match those tones, I think that's totally fine, um, totally acceptable to do. I'm gonna put a little variation over here because I see some variation a little darker over this area that kind of goes from about here down And then get a little variation in this area. Make it pretty subtle. This is kind of a smooth gradient over to over to this area. I can use a little bit of contour line to help differentiate as well. And I can round out corners in multiple directions as well so that it looks a little bit more comfortable, a little more organic. And then what I find is that there's a little bit of a differentiation in tone down here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some differentiation in tone in, large, in this large area. And what I'm thinking is if I notice anything small and obvious, I'll do that. But I like to think from large to small first. So I'm looking for big areas that buy me a lot of punch, right? It's like this area is, is relative to the object, is, is a lot of surface area, and that buys me a lot of differentiation and variation in the, in the uh, fabric. And so I want to make the biggest use of that that I can. Okay, now the top, most of the top, like this area right here catches a lot of light, but a lot of the top has a little bit of tone on it. So I can go through and just kind of get a very faint, like less than a quarter tone differentiation there, just to give the top a little bit of variety because 
It's not super bright. So that kind of helps that bit of rendering along. Then as I work out, I can kind of just continue on with this process and uh, try to have fun with it, you know? So I can get in to putting a little transition down here at the bottom where this fold kind of tucks under this direction. I can just go right along the bottom. I can leave a little bit of um, a little bit of this tone down there to get a to get that reflected light going. Then I can um, get some tone down here to kind of begin to help differentiate this area. Um, I can kind of push the tone down towards the contours to kind of help with the clarity of everything, which I think is important. And then, you know, I have an edge here that I need to clean up. So this area kind of needs to get some tone on it. It goes back in space. Then I need to get some tone into this little kind of valley here. Work on the tone on this side some. Soften that transition. It gets pretty dark in here. So I'm going to go to that. Um, to this little half tone or three quarter tone. Make sure that transitions out okay. Then I need some tone to lead into that a little bit. And I've got a three quarter tone getting cast by this fold. And then right here, where this fold kind of um, becomes ground tone right here. This area is real dark. So I need to go ahead and push that down into the darkest tone. So then I have um, this kind of complicated area here. This is a tone that that uh, I need some tones to help differentiate this area. So I can begin with a, a soft tone, deepen it, um, this area has pretty much an absolute black down here in this area. So I'm going to put that cast shadow in and run the three quarter tone down to where it intersects and overlaps. And then this area is kind of a mid tone and so on. And so Essentially now, I think you've got kind of an idea of how this process works. So now it's just about applying it um, to the exact situation that you see with what you're drawing. And you shouldn't have too much trouble once you, once you kind of get the hang of it. Once you practice a few times, it'll start to become pretty clear. One of the things that can happen is if you get too sharp of an edge, that can kind of um, kill your depth a little bit. So you, if you get too sharp of an edge, um, what can happen sometimes is like the figure and ground can reverse and get really confusing. So you may have to change that and, um, and work on softening up edges. Easiest way to soften up an edge is, let's say you have um, an edge here, right? And you have one tone here and a darker tone here. Now, what I find is if I've gone and I've darkened this tone parallel to the edge, a lot of times that can, that alone can sharpen the edge a little bit too much. So um, if you think about, you know, approaching an edge rather than having the edge here between two values and working the values parallel to that edge, if you work at an angle to it, That'll help you, that'll get, get control over that edge a little bit better. So that should give you enough to work on, um, at least to get started in terms of rendering all this stuff.